Good evening, everyone. We begin the readout tonight with the Republicans who continue to pour gasoline on the flames that led to January 6th. Now, we've seen on countless occasions how GOP lawmakers have downplayed the violence and deflected blame for the insurrection, all while defending the big lie. But now one freshman member of Congress is taking it up a notch, or should I say down a notch? 26-year-old junior brown shirt Madison Cawthorn of North Carolina, who from the start made it clear that his purpose in Washington is messaging, not legislating, is not only pushing the big lie, he's issuing a warning that would be better described as a threat. While promoting false claims of election fraud at a local GOP event on Sunday, Cawthorn raised the prospect that if Republican candidates lose future elections, the answer might be for their supporters to get violent. He even suggested that if, if things don't work out at the ballot box the way Republican voters want them to, even he might take up arms against his fellow Americans. See for yourself. I'll tell you, anybody who tells you that Joe Biden was dutifully elected is lying to you. If our election systems continue to be rigged and continue to be stolen, then it's, it's going to lead to one place, and that's bloodshed. And I will tell you, as much as I'm willing to defend our liberty at all costs, there's nothing that I would dread doing more than having to pick up arms against a fellow American. So Cawthorn, who, let's just reiterate, it's not just some guy. He's a, yes, embarrassing, creepy, tree-punching, but sitting member of Congress. And here he is, clearly justifying violence based on the false pretense of a rigged election. That's the central claim of the big lie which led to the January 6th insurrection in the first place. And he's also suggesting that he condones the insurrection itself, portraying the perpetrators of the Capitol siege, who chanted, hang Mike Pence, and brought a noose and scaffolding with them just in case they caught him. He's praising them as heroes. Cawthorn was referred to the jailed insurrectionists, who, by the way, are charged with serious crimes, including assaulting police officers by beating them and dousing them with bear spray, portraying them as political prisoners and hostages. He even mused about busting them out. Here he is doing that portion of his act. The big problem is we don't actually know where all the political prisoners are. And so if we were to actually be able to go and try and bust them out, and let me tell you, the reason why they're ta they've taken these political prisoners is because they're trying to make an example to say, because they don't want to see the mass protest going on in Washington. Huh. And here is how Cawthorn responded when a member of the audience asked, when's the next insurrection? And asked when he'll be summoned back to Washington to get it on. When are you going to call us to Washington again? <laughs> that, that, we, are, that, we are actively working on that one. Hmm. Found that funny, did you? A spokesman for Cawthorn insisted to the Washington Post that the congressman, quote, is clearly advocating for violence not to occur. Really? Was that supposed to be like funny irony, Madison? Because by casting doubt on a legitimate election and then chest pumping about possible bloodshed, you are actually encouraging political violence. In fact, the very kind of political violence that's normally associated with brown shirt fascism. Now, all this begs the question, where is Kevin McCarthy? In a normal world, Cawthorn's threatening remarks would seem to warrant disciplinary action and even expulsion from Congress. But despite our request today, the Republican leader has not made any comment. And that brings us to our next point, which is that many of the Republicans who've promoted the big lie don't even believe it themselves. Take Senator Ron Johnson, for example. He's been pushing false claims of voter fraud since the beginning. And in May, he wouldn't even acknowledge that Biden legitimately won the election. Well, he's now supporting an Arizona-style fraud it of Wisconsin, like the one in Arizona. However, in secretly recorded footage, we discover that when he thinks Trump's not looking, Johnson drops the Looney Tune mask and admits to investigative reporter Laura Windsor, who he assumed was a Trump supporter, that Trump legit lost the election and had only himself to blame for losing Wisconsin, and that there was nothing skewed at all about the election results.
Joining me now is Congressman Eric Swalwell of California, a Trump impeachment manager earlier this year, and Clint Watts, former FBI special agent and MSNBC national security analyst. Thank you both for being here. And Congressman, I, I, I'm sitting here looking at an, uh, a tweet that you sent out um, earlier this week, and you, you wrote that a staffer had emailed you asking um, if you wanted to buy a bulletproof vest, because that's now an approved expense in the House given what's gone on. And you said, I don't believe, I didn't believe it was for real. Turns out she was thinking about people like Madison Cawthorn, not even people outside of my office building, but rather inside. So you've got people like Madison Cawthorn who are basically spoiling for another January 6th internally. The Speaker of the House issued a statement um, saying, like he has several times this year, Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy is refusing to take action against a member of his conference who's calling for violence. As somebody who has to serve with this person, do you believe that it is time for Madison Cawthorn to be expelled from Congress? He should face uh, the consequences for what he has said. And, and I think Speaker Pelosi is considering that. Uh, and, and that's what her statement reflects. And, and this is why Kevin McCarthy cannot be Speaker. He is not responsible enough to break from Donald Trump and just condemn basic outright violence. By the way, that aide uh, asked me earlier tonight, uh, she said, you know, you didn't respond to the email. Uh, do you want the vest? You tweeted about it. And, and I thought it was bananas, uh, frankly, when she sent it to me. I, I thought it was a joke. Uh, a lot of my colleagues have, you know, understandably purchased bulletproof vests, which I respect. But as you see, these statements from people like Madison Cawthorn, I'm naive. I'm the naive one to think that he and others would not again invite, assemble, incite, and aim violence at the Capitol. And so we have to be prepared because it's it's twin lies, actually, Joy. There's two lies that they are telling that are deadly. The lie about the election, where there has been continued violence in our country, and the lies about the vaccine that are inspiring people to stay unvaccinated and are literally killing us and making our kids very vulnerable to this virus. And it's not just him. I mean, you have you currently serve, Congressman, with Lauren Boebert of Colorado, who's made joking videos with gunshot sounds about the Speaker of the House, who's on this list, along with Cawthorn, of lawmakers at the Select Committee want their telephone records to find out what involvement they had with January 6th. You have Margie Green, who travels around with January 6th insurrectionists. You have Jim Jordan, who we come to find out knew more and more and more, talked to Donald Trump multiple times. We don't know what he said. Andy Biggs, Paul Gosar, Mo Brooks, who are named by Ali Alexander as co-conspirators. Madison Cawthorn, who apparently when he's not punching trees is threatening a brown shirt attack on his on the Capitol where he works. Louis Gohmert, Jody High, Scott Perry, Matt Gates, go on and on on Madison Gates. Uh, Mr. Gates is not necessarily somebody you can have your teenage daughters around and feel completely safe. You're serving with all of those people. And I have to ask you, do you feel safe around them? Some of them are known I, gun owners and keep trying to bring their guns into the Capitol. Well, well, thank God for the Capitol Police heroes that they continue to dishonor. But I, I do believe that they are capable of inciting and aiding another mob at the Capitol. Uh, and if they're not condemned by their own leadership, uh, they are only further emboldened. Uh, and so uh, I, I think we have to continue to speak out against it, to call it out, uh, and frankly, reiterate that we are a nation of law and order. And if we don't have law and order, we don't have anything as a country. And when a representative is calling for violence against members of Congress, we are very close to losing everything. Clint, the last time that we had members of the United States Congress essentially threaten the lives of fellow Americans, it was the 1860s, and we wound up in a civil war in which Americans took up arms against Americans in order to keep owning people, right? You had pro-slavery senators and others inciting to, to violence. We have that situation again. It is now clear, I think, to me, and I wonder if it is to you as somebody with a law enforcement background, that the insurrectionists are not just the yahoos who went after the Capitol and the Proud Boys and the extremist members of the three percenters and other groups. 
It's members of Congress. This is almost Al Qaeda like. I, I don't I've never seen anything like this. Have you? Uh, Joy, this is the remarkable thing is we talk about the end of the war in Afghanistan 20 years ago. Uh, what we were looking at was incitement to violence. And the justification was always, ah, you have to defend. It's defensive, right? The, it, we have to defend against the Americans. Listen to the language of Madison Cawthorn and some of these other uh, congressmen and what they're saying. They talk about, oh, we have to defend. We have to defend. We have to fight back. Well, guess what? Someone will. We saw this on January 6th. And what tends to happen is when they storm these places, guess who's running for cover and guess who's looking for law enforcement to help them? It's the Capitol Police that then have to protect them. And what ultimately ends up happening when these lies are revealed, guess who becomes the target of this incitement? It's often those that are speaking the lies. Madison Cawthorn, some of these guys that are doing all this incitement to violence, they will ultimately fall victim to it if they continue to push these lies over and over again. And it also creates a response. It's a parallel response. For every incitement that they push, there's an opposite party that feels like they need to push back. That competing rhetoric, that movement to violence of many different polls results in a very dangerous system in our country. And you saw it right there in that, that interview, Joy, when you saw it. He asked, when do you want me to go? There was somebody in the crowd who said, when are we going back? They're asking for instructions. And when they're asking for instructions like that, they already have the intent. They're just waiting for a time and a place to be pointed.